good morning everyone myself dr inderjit kaur associate professor in the department of computer science and engineering ajay kumar garg engineering college ghaziabad in this lecture we will be studying about the computer organization and architecture course so after covering uh, the synchronous and asynchronous data transfer in this lecture we will be doing the modes of data transfer uh, there are three modes of data transfer one is programmed input output interrupt initiated input output and the third one is dma that stands for direct memory access so in this lecture we will be covering the first and second one that is programmed input output and interrupt initiated input output as we know that the information that is transferred from the cpu to the external device it is originated from the memory unit so if the memory unit and io device they wants to communicate suppose any uh, we want to type anything from the keyboard and we want to save it into the any memory device so basically the memory device and the io device they are communicating with each other with the help of cpu so in that case uh, as these two devices they are different one and cpu is continuously monitoring them so in that case cpu is just wasting its cpu cycles so it is not doing anything productive so uh, for these kind of data transfer there are basically three modes of transfer we will be studying that so the information that is transferred from the cpu to any external device using uh, the memory that is originated from the memory unit either it will be memory read or it will be memory write so the cpu it merely processes the information uh, but the source and the target they always they are the memory unit as i told ki either we will be doing the memory read or we will be doing the memory write operation so the data transfer between the central computer to io device they it can be handled in three possible ways and the possible ways are one is the programmed io we have done some programming and through that program cpu is continuously monitoring and the second one is interrupt initiated io in that case if any device uh, is interrupting if any device it wants to communicate to the cpu then it will interrupt it will send an interrupt to the cpu and corresponding action will be taken by the cpu and the third one is direct memory access that is dma in this cpu will relinquish its control and uh, through interface the devices and the memory they will be communicating so in, we will be studying first two modes in this lecture and the dma it will be covered in the next lecture so first is programmed io program input output operations they are the result of io instructions input output instructions like in out they are written in my computer program and the data transfer uh, from cpu or to cpu through external device or external device to cpu whatever is sent they are continuously being monitored by the cpu then this data transfer it is done by sending or writing the instruction programs and that is being executed by the cpu and it is continuously monitored by the cpu so the transferring data under program it uh, it requires constant monitoring of the peripheral by the cpu that is the first most task in this mode that is in programmed io so once the data transfer it is initiated the cpu is required to continuous monitor the interface only to see when a data transfer can be made again for the second device or uh, when the third device it requires to transfer the data so in this way cpu is continuously busy and it is not doing any productive task so let us take an example of programmed io here this is my processor this is a uh, interface and this is the io devices as we have discussed in the previous lecture all the input output devices they are communicating with the cpu through interface because cpu is an electronic device and these io devices they are either electromechanical or electro um, chemical mechanical devices basing uh, depending upon their function so first thing the valid data will be sent by the io device that it wants to communicate to the cpu and accordingly it will place its content on the data bus so in the interface what will happen as the 
valid data is being placed on the data bus. Accordingly, the status register contents will be set and the flag register will be set to 1. Initially, it was 0. So, the third step, we will be setting the status register actually. Then, after setting the status register, the data accepted will be sent through interface to I.O. so that any another I.O. device or the same I.O. device should not start sending the next data. Then, now the communication between this interface and this CPU will start. Uh, from the, con the content of data register that, that has come from data bus, they will be sent to CPU by data bus and accordingly input output read or write whatever operation is required will be done by telling the address through address bus. So, now is the communication between this processor and this interface is taking place to handle one byte of data transfer. So, in this manner after the data transfer, one byte of data transfer is complete, this data accepted signal it will be invalidated so that the IO device can send the next byte of data. That is, in this case, the IO devices, they do not have uh, the direct access to the memory. We can see this, the transfer from IO device to memory, it requires the execution of several instructions by the CPU. As I told ki, this, they are sending uh, the data to the CPU and then CPU is communicating to memory here. So, it will be sending uh, the data to memory via processor. So, the transfer of IO device to memory, it requires the con uh, continuous execution of several instructions that are written in the form of instruction program by the CPU. So, an input instruction to transfer the data from the device to the CPU and the second one is the store instruction to transfer the data from CPU to memory. So, these two types of communications they are taking place. One is our um, input instruction and the second one is our store instruction. Then, as I earlier told, ki this is my input instruction to transfer the data from the device to CPU and this is my store instruction to transfer the data from the CPU to memory. So, in, in this case, in both way communication is taking place. So, the device transfers the bytes of data and we have shown the example for one byte of data. So, in this manner, all the bytes of data will be sent and CPU, we can see it will be busy always for uh, placing, uh, for communicating between our uh, input output devices and memory. So, the device, they transfer the bytes of data one at a time as they are available. So, whenever a byte of data, it is available, the device, it places it in the I.O. bus. The first step, it places the content on the I.O. bus and it enables its data valid line. Data valid line, second. Then, after that, the interface, it accepts the byte and it places into the data register and it enables the data accepted line as I told in the diagram. So, so the interface now it sets a bit in the status register and we will set our F4 flag as 1. Then this device it can now disable its data valid line so that the next data should not come from device to interface because now from interface to CPU the data will be sent. But it will not transfer another byte until the data accepted line is disabled by the interface. So, in this manner the communication between IO and interface using interface and CPU is taking place and then from CPU to memory is taking place. That is not shown in this diagram. Then, as I told, the program is written for the computer to check the flag in the status register to determine whether the byte has been placed in the data register uh, by the IO device or no. So, if 
it is placed then we will be sending the next byte that is it is done by reading the content of status register into the cpu register and checking the value of flag bit so either that flag bit will be 0 or it will be 1 so if this flag bit it is equal to 1 what does this mean this means the cpu it reads the data from the data register means the transfer is taking place whatever data was being typed or communicated through io device to interface now from interface to cpu that data is being read then so after the data is being read that flag is set to zero for transferring the next byte of data that is this flag byte is then cleared to zero by either our cpu or the interface it depends how the interface circuits are designed designing of the circuits uh, of our control unit that we have discussed earlier also in our unit 3 that was either through hardwired or through control unit microprogrammed that is once this flag it is cleared so the interface it will disable the data accepted line and now the device can transfer the next data byte so in this manner uh, the data transfer in terms of byte will happen byte by byte the data transfer for the whole uh, set of data controlled by an instruction program will happen so we can see these steps the first thing the cpu it requests an i operation as i told key cpu is now controlling the IO operations an instruction program is being written to handle uh, to handle all the set of uh, instructions uh, IO instructions then IO module it performs the operations then the task IO module now it set the status bits now the task of CPU it is continuously checking the status bit periodically if this is clear to zero that means uh, that one byte of transfer has been taken place successfully and if this flag is one that means the data is being uh, data has to be read from interface to by the cpu now then so io module it does not inform the cpu directly either through interface it will tell so the io module it will not interrupt the cpu in this case and as I said this line that means ki CPU it has to wait or it will come back later. So CPU is unnecessarily busy without doing anything. It is just waiting and watching ki whenever the data transfer has to take place, whenever the data transfer has taken place or is taking place just this. So the under uh, program IO the data transfer is very like the memory access means uh, my uh, IO device it wants to do the memory transfer and it wants the CPU cycles it wants the CPU as an observer so each device it is given a unique identifier because there are so many devices so every device it will be having an unique identifier and every device it wants to send it wants to write into memory or it wants to read from memory CPU it commands certain addresses so the uh, steps of instructions uh, execution they are here being shown the first step the cpu and io communication is taking place we can see that is uh, the, it issues the read command to the io module that is our first step then it issues key, uh, read the status of io module that is now the communication between io and cpu is taking place then third I am just checking, I means CPU is just checking the status bit. So if there is an error condition it will handle that and if uh, the status is ok that is uh, it will read the word from IO module now. Whatever contents was placed in the data register in the data bus now those the content of data register they will be placed they will be sent to CPU via data bus. Then. Uh, after placing after sending the data to processor the next task comes key the memory comes into the picture that is now cpu to memory communication is taking place that is 
we have to write the word into memory or we have to read from memory so uh, then this is the transfer of one byte so if it is done yes the next instruction will be executed if it is no then cpu and memory communication for the one byte is continuously taking place so uh, i can say in this program by your method cpu is staying in a program loop until io unit it indicates that it is ready for next transfer so we can say that it is very time consuming process and it is keeping my cpu unnecessarily busy so uh, what should be next step it should be avoided yes it should be avoided using an interrupt facility what is that and how it is that we are going to discuss for our second mode of transfer that is we are using some special commands to inform the interface so that it should an issue an interrupt request signal whenever the data is available from the device as we have said ki cpu is an electronic device it is using everything very fast manner and uh, all the devices various devices they are very much slow so whenever a device it wants to communicate to any uh, to memory or cpu it it should send an interrupt request so in the meanwhile cpu should execute some another program rather than wasting its cycle so it will increase cpu efficiency that is in the meantime the cpu can proceed for the executing the another program and the interface it will now the interface will keep monitoring the device so when the device it determines that the device is ready for the data transfer it will uh, send an interrupt signal it will send an interrupt signal to uh, the cpu asking for a request ki now i want some cpu cycle please give me so upon detecting that external interrupt signal the cpu it momentarily stops whatever task it is doing and now it branches to the service program to uh, switch over that io transfer and after that io transfer is being completed it uh, it automatically uh, returns back to the task whatever it was performing earlier so let us discuss now the applications of this method program io as i said this program io it is useful in small low speed computer very beginner cases we have initiated with this method that is program io and then it is being used in the system that are dedicated to monitor a device continuously let us come to discuss the advantages of this program io that is uh, advantages are it is very simple to implement the beginners they started to uh, with the program io then uh, we require very little hardware support uh, by this uh, program io method then third manner then next is disadvantages as we have seen the cpu is continuously wasting its cycles it is just uh, waiting and watching the the actual speed of uh, the actual work or the actual efficiency of the cpu it is not coming into the picture that is the processor has to wait for a long time for the io module it has to work according the io module speed so that is uh, of the concern so it should be ready for the reception or transmission of data it is being handled or it is being done when the io module is ready and io module speed is very slow so that that's the reason the processor also becomes very slow and we don't want that so that is the drawback of this method then the performance it uh, of the entire system it gets degraded now move on to the second method that is our interrupt initiated io interrupt initiated io as the name suggests the interrupts are being initiated whenever there is an io transfer has to take place whenever an io device is being ready for doing the data transfer it will send an interrupt so uh, rather than continuously monitoring of cpu the interface should inform now interface should become the monitor now it should be monitoring and uh, it should issue an interrupt request signal 
IRT we will discuss through diagram in the next slide for the data availability using some special commands. So, in the, in the meanwhile CPU it should uh, proceed to execute another program and the interface it keeps monitoring the device. So, whenever we are executing any simple program of in C uh, let us take the example of addition subtraction. So, if we are implementing in C and uh, when we execute it, it takes very less time. So, in the data structure suppose we uh, uh, write the program of sorting then uh, and uh, then when we are studying the operating system and we uh, come to discuss the um, hmm, how much execution time the program is taking place for 8 merge sort of using 8 numbers or like that. So, we observe ki this execution time should be less. So, how CPU is uh, when the entire program it is residing inside the main memory then it requests the CPU ki I want to execute all these instructions. So, that execution time is it should be very less means CPU is granted entirely to that program for that specific period of time. So, whenever those instructions they are residing inside the main memory then it gets the CPU and the, all the instructions they get executed. So, uh, in, suppose in that program we there is some branching means uh, there is some uh, go to statement written or uh, there are some external interrupts if there come or there are some IO instructions written in or out. In that case rather than uh, rather than just uh, getting executed sequentially the CPU uh, the addresses they get the branching means the program counter rather than getting incrementing only it gets uh, it stores its present value and it goes to the next instruction address as per the instruction given in the CPU. If it is in then the communication between IO device and uh, CPU it starts. That means upon detecting the uh, external interrupt signal the CPU by storing the return address from the program counter into the memory stack. This memory stack we have discussed it because uh, they are uh, just a temporary registers we can say for temp storing the temporary values of the program counter where the CPU has to return back after executing its present now next ready instructions. So, then the control branches to the service routine that processes the required IO transfer. Then there are two methods for uh, doing this. One is our using non-vectored interrupt and second is our vectored interrupt. Vectored interrupt, non-vectored interrupt the branch address is assigned to a fixed location inside the memory and in vectored interrupt the source will tell uh, the, about the branching means it supplies the branch information to the computer and this, intra, this address it is called the interrupt vector. This interrupt vector is nothing, it is just the first address of the IO service routine or it tells us the address that points to the location in the memory for beginning uh, address of the service routine. Then priority interrupt, if there are so many devices they want to interrupt to the CPU to whom it should be given. So, that becomes the priority interrupt. So, the priority interrupt it is a system that establishes a priority over the various sources to determine uh, which condition to be serviced first when there are two or more uh, requests they are occurring simultaneously. So, uh, high speed data transfer devices such as magnetic disk they are given priority and uh, the low devices they are given uh, slow devices they are given low priority. So, if two devices they interrupt the CPU at the same time then the CPU it services the device that has the higher priority. Then uh, how this priority establishment is done? It is it can be done using two ways by either software or by either hardware. So, the polling procedure it decides uh, it is used to um, identify the highest priority source by the software means. That is there is one common branch address for all the interrupts and the program that uh, uh, takes care of the interrupts it begins the branch address and it pulls the uh, interrupt service in 
सीक्वेंस देन इफ वी आर डूइंग द प्रियोरिटी यूजिंग हार्डवेयर मेथड देन द डिवाइस विद द हाइएस्ट प्रियोरिटी दैट इज यूजिंग सीरियल मैडर मैनर देन इट इज कॉल्ड द डेजी चेनिंग प्रियोरिटी एंड द डिवाइस विद हाइएस्ट प्रियोरिटी इट इज प्लेस इन द फर्स्ट पोजिशन दिस इज हाइएस्ट प्रियोरिटी देन द सेकेंड प्रियोरिटी देन थर्ड प्रियोरिटी एंड सो ऑन सो uh followed by the devices with the lower priority and that is placed uh, in the last chain the interrupt it request line it is common to all the devices this is my interrupt request that is common for all the devices whichever devices they wants to interrupt they want cpu they will send they will place their address on this bus then the cpu it will send an acknowledgement using this whichever devices they have uh, interrupted so it will set its pi as 1 suppose this device they want it wants cpu so it will set its out value as 0 so that the next device is not able to get the cpu and when it uh, when it has placed pi as 1 and po as 0 then it will place its vector address on this bus and it will place the data on this bus and in this manner the communication will take place so the advantage of this is uh all the devices uh, whenever they want the cpu they get as per their priority then the second method that was uh, the devices were connected serial manner now the devices they are connected in a parallel manner this is the devices desk uh, printer reader keyboard as per their uh, uh, priority they are being assigned the numbers and this is our mask register it is same as the number of devices being attached being handed together and being given to priority encoder the output of priority encoder is the vector address that is given to cpu and the output is given to ist and then ist handed with ien it uh, it sends the interrupt to cpu and the acknowledgement to cpu it is uh, it is the end of my ien and uh, ist and it enables my vector address that is being sent to cpu that is the parallel priority interrupt method it uses a uh, register whose bits are uh, set separately by the interrupt signal from the device then the priority it is established according to the position of the bits in the register and the circuit uh, it may include a mask register whose purpose is to control the status of each interrupt request so in addition to this interrupt register the circuit has mask register that is used to control the status of every interrupted uh, request and uh, this mask register it can be programmed to disable the low priority interrupts then it can also be uh, there should be a facility that high priority device to interrupt the cpu while a low priority device is being serviced so it consists of an interrupt register whose individual bits they are being set by the external conditions and they are cleared by the program instructions and uh, the magnetic disk as we have said it is a high speed service device it is given a higher priority and the mask register it has the same number of bits as there are number uh, there are number of bits in our interrupt register so this was all about the first and second method that is programmed io and interrupt initiated io method of modes of transfer in the next le lecture series we will be discussing about the dma that is direct memory access thank you